Hey, Seth. Hey, how's it going? Good. How was the chicken show? It was great. We had a good time. Did pretty well, too. You win some ribbons? Yeah, we got a flack. I took reserve ban them out of 350 birds. I was pretty excited about that. We're good. You need it raining. Can you hear that? Does it sound pretty loud, or do you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. There's some rain going on, so I just want to make sure you can hear me okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, okay. So the first question I have is um, what interest you, What interested you and your family to, first of all, get involved in, in getting Paco Vicuñas? It was a way of life decision for us. It was we grew up on raising cattle and always had some type of livestock. And I've always wanted to have a type of I guess, livelihood where it, that would be your job is to raise the animals. And I think our when we saw this opportunity to start researching it, that's kind of the decision that kind of led us to go ahead and pursue this versus having a hobby farm was possibly get pretty big with this where it was sustain a full time fam full time job for the way of life for our family. Yeah. Did you guys do full time with when you had cattle, did you just do that kind of on the side? No, though? we did it just on the side. We just had a few of them just just enough to kinda of do chores and give you some responsibility and then to have so you can butcher beef every year. But yeah. it, it was it was just something you do chores with for a few minutes every night where you know, the chickens were kind of the same way. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so it's something you enjoyed the animals and, you know, um, always had animals and then thought maybe going with the Paco Vicuña that... Yeah, and that. another thing too with Paco Vicuña, it was, it was such a new breed, something new that you get, get in on the ground floor or something that we saw and believe and the same thing we'll still do that could turn into something pretty big. And it's not very often you can jump in on ground floor or something like that and help grow it and advance it. And that's something that's always excited us with animals. Yeah. So, okay. That is a good um, segue to my next question is, uh, so what, what's the advantage of becoming a, a member of the Paco Vicuña Association today? So, you know, like you said, it's still kind of, it's still kind of in its infancy, and if, if somebody were to come in today. What it does, I mean, it's, since we're still so small and, and young with it, I don't think it can offer what it doesn't offer you what it could offer in the future as we continue to grow. I mean, with that, you, you get your animals, they're registered, they're, they're DNA tested, so you know for sure the parentage of the animal, and so once you they will keep them registered, the registered animals got more value to you, to you. You shouldn't. I mean, to me, I wouldn't want to buy anything unless it was a registered animal. That way, you know know the parentage, and also along with the registered or what the association is, is we do EPD testing, and all you gotta do is submit your uh, your, your uh, fiber analysis to a Yoko McCall, and from that we collect the, the fiber results from them and send on to be do a, a herd wide EPD testing. That's that's to me that's the biggest thing that becoming a member of the association right now offers you is is the EPD being you know, being allowed into the EPD program. Yeah. Yeah, and well, okay. So now you know there's less than a thousand animals, but with there gets to be, I don't know, let's say even over you know thousands, even over a hundred thousand animals. Will it still be possible to do it? You know, the same. Is it, is well, EP, yeah, there? APDs, is, it's already set up, so it doesn't matter if we're adding 20 or 30 new animals or up to several hundred a year. Once the APDs are set up, and that's the hardest part is done for, it's just running through the EPD program going forward. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, if you had a bunch of animals, it may take a little more time, but the hard part's already done. So it's just yeah. it's there to, to grow and, and to be used. Okay. So... So where do you see the association, let's say two years from now? Do you see um, maybe new members coming in, or is that? I or what, right now I see it kind of staying the same, slowly growing. We've we've had some mice, the new the new farms come on board that buy animals from us and say they'd be members that 
that. So, I mean, we're seeing a few new members coming on. I can see us growing in the next few years up to five five new members or so. I mean, it's slow growing. We're so small as it is, but I do see it to, con- to continue to grow over the next few years, even though it won't be by least a bound. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're saying you've, you've had a few more. I know you had the one family or the one couple or th- that um... – that bought some animals from me. Have you sold more yeah. since then? No, we had not really. I mean, we had the, the uh, ladies in New York. They said they would join. They they've always planned to be members. I don't think they've ever officially done it yet. Oh, okay. So I mean, yeah, the the family in Kansas City that they're helping this year, and then a couple couple ladies from New York. Yeah, yeah. So would they board with you, or do you think they would uh, actually buy their own animals and have them? at their place or they currently board with us and we're hoping that and they know that too that we're hoping that we can get a, a farm presence on the east coast and then once you get the animals out there it's a little more accessible for others to come see the animals and see if that's what they want for themselves uh-huh. that's something we would love to see is, is a farm presence out east right and so I, I guess with anything um, when you first start any kind of, you know, any business, any kind of organization, I guess the hardest is, you know, at the beginning. Uh, I mean, the good thing is the the animals are here, um, you know, the breeding is good, um, the registry is all set up. But where where do you see maybe the POC of Acuna Association in 10 or 20 years from now? Can you repeat that last year? I heard most of the questions. What was, that? What was your question? I yeah, so where do you see it. the Pacova Cookney Association in 10 or 20 years from now? I think they continue to grow. I mean, with the integrity of the DNA testing and the registry, so it's just not registering animals and saying this is this is a parentage with it being able to match, match them with, to the DNA. I, just, I mean, you have the integrity of you know for sure what the animals are. I know like some of the cattle, cattle breeds, you can just say, oh, the parentage is, is this and it's without the DNA testing, it's just you're hoping that the farmer registered it properly. So this by the DNA test, I just you keep your integrity as the as the breeders continue to breed and expand. I just see that the association will continue to expand with that. I think the herds are going to continue to grow. I know at our farm we are breeding for more and more all the time, and as the the pocket of Kenya as a whole becomes more. Because no one who starts to grow in the fiber and names get out there, I, think I just see this continue to grow over the next 15, 20 years. Yeah, so it's more maybe the name recognition and, and the quality of the fiber, and that that will definitely help. Yeah. yeah, I would say, I mean, in our minds, when multiple tests, ever test field tests, the pup. Hey, Seth, are you there? Hello? 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 